Welcome back guys and gals and today we're going to be walking through this gallery. It's called The Hole. It's down in the Bowery of New York City and we're looking through their collection here. Uh, they have two shows currently going till the 6th of May. There's a ceramic show that was super uninteresting and this show is, I'm not sure it's a first show or if it's a new artist or not. You can hear the police outside my window currently. But uh, it's a really interesting show. And we're going to kind of like walk through this through the next 10 minutes and see like what's happening. And we're going to talk about what you see. So you're seeing that I'm quickly viewing the, um, the artworks right now. And don't worry, I'm going to go back in a second and do some zoom in so you can see texture and things like that on the different um, images. So at first glance, I did not really appreciate this uh, art show. And then as I was doing the zoom ins, so here's the doorway right here so that you can see comparison and size of what these paintings are. They're quite substantial. They're quite large. Um, I'm going to start zooming in now on things so that you can see what's happening. So you can see clearly that everything seems to be uh, paint by number almost, but he also is doing things where he's painting on top of things. So I really, I'm perplexed about how I feel about these paintings. So I'm not sure if I love them or I hate them, but they are dynamic to me they are they're I don't want to say nice or they're well done or they're pretty because I feel like those are all cop-out answers from college that those are the things you say in a critique when you have nothing else to say like it's well done it's pretty blah 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 because well done pretty can mean that you're too lazy to say anything else about the artwork now look at the Modelo can right there you'll see how it curves at both ends. Now follow that in the other paintings as well. But I also really like how the texturing on this pick, that's why I zoomed in on it. Now if we look at this chain, now the chain is super interesting to me because there he's not he's doing the same thing. He's not drawing lines. He's just plenty, uh, placing paint down and letting your eye draw kind of that three dimensionality. And he's doing the same thing with color around this basket. It has a lot of depth to it, and it's really, I don't know, there's there's something really provocative about how some objects in these paintings have a lot of depth, like the basket. Even from there it has depth, like the basket here, it has depth. But then you look at the lighter and it doesn't seem to have a lot of depth or dimension to it. It's really pretty and it's well done, but, you know. And look at how he did the, the closing pen right there. I like the cards. I like that. Um, his brush stroke is very uh, consistent. It's At first I was like, oh, this is so, feel, it feels rushed. But I feel like it's a rushed in a good way versus rushed and sloppy. I feel like he's, whoever this person is, they are doing these very intentionally. They're not trying to get, you know, that perfect Disney line, not that, you know, Ellsworth Kelly line. He's trying to get, he or she is trying to get um, a very, oh, oh, this is so good. Look at those. Look at those. He's, again, it's, he's not drawing line. He's letting your mind, he's painting at the height of his viewer's intelligence. So he's not trying to give it to you in a stupid way. He's trying to make you think about the objects. Like, the things to me that are the most interesting about this show are the things that you don't, um, are, are the things that you, you see, but he's playing that, oh, you're smart enough to figure out what this is. Like, when we look at the bristles here in a second, you're going to see, like, it, you feel like all the bristles are there, and it's a bristle brush, but now let's zoom in on it, and... Nope, it's just one layer of green and then he's slapped in some layers of yellow. And I feel like that is a very loose way to paint, but I feel like he's doing it in a very successful way. 
Uh, he likes certain objects. I've seen you, the, there's the Modelo can again, the step stool. There's an orange. You'll see the oranges again. Here's the squirt, squirt bottle again, those clothes clips. You'll see that most of these objects he's using over and over again. Again, paying to, playing just a few things. And I like how he's using almost an arbitrary neon to show light around this uh, orange. I feel like this is better shown through video than in person because I feel like these colors are being a lot more intense. I'm not sure if that's my iPhone, but I don't remember these colors being as sumptuous and intense as they are in these video. So I would recommend if you want to see more of these, I would go back to the, uh, the hole in, down in the Bowery and ask to see these paintings. I do at the end of this video have the price list and yes. Also, this is another thing that he does. Look, look at this rubber band. Like, it's two colors, but I feel like there's a lot of depth to it. And what really adds it is the outline of the shadow. And then here's these two sets of jellies that he's making. And now it's really just interesting, this. I know interesting is a cop-out word and it's a filler word and I'm saying it, and I'm sorry. But again, look at this. It's really kind of like captivating how he paints these things. And I find that a lot of the things I'm really drawn to, this is something that I was just blown away by is the sticker. Just the technical and the amount of work that had to go into the, and the treads on this jelly sandal are really great. Look at the stitch, the fake stitch work that he did. And it's just a simple, simple, like I feel like he's playing a lot to what Sargent said is uh, play to the height of your viewers intelligence and let them fill in the blanks. And I feel like that person is doing this here. And this apple is probably just so wonderful. Look at look at the texturing he puts on it. And that apple and the shadow of the core, you know. Look at it. Look at it. And it's just stifle in there. And the brushwork, if if you look at the brushwork on its own, it looks haphazard, but then you look at the sticker and it seems very intentional. And I'm I I guess I do like and dislike how both of those are mixed together. I still am no, these I don't like. The earbuds, this is the detractor for me. Like, I don't, I don't enjoy that. But again, the screws, he's playing to the height of your intelligence as a viewer. Like, you know what these things look like. I don't need to paint every last detail. You know what this looks like. A little clamp. And I like how he uses the spray paint and uses a variation of textures and um, methods of playing applying paint. Now look at this tape measure and you see how it's like at an angle but there's a lot of yeah I really enjoy it like there feels to be a depth to them like you that it's in a, its own reality but it's sitting in a real reality it's not so poorly made that you can't see it. Now I'm gonna back away and I'm gonna span the gallery this is a really provocative show it's very well done. I just said the well done's cop out word, but these are they're I guess they're the new form of like trying to paint. So and what we're gonna be seeing over the next 20, 30 years. I don't necessarily enjoy it, but I feel like the person here understands how to construct an image, which is super important. Here's the price list if you're interested. I took a picture of it so that you, the viewer, could uh, see what these things run. But if you want to contact, go ahead and contact the gallery. Anyway, thanks for joining.